How's it going VC? Mr Boulder here and I'm uh, back this week with another album ranking video. This week ranking the uh, the albums from Floridian death metal legends Morbid Angel. Um, if you're into extreme metal you're gonna know who Morbid Angel are you know don't need no introduction whatsoever. Fantastic band. Put out some absolutely outstanding albums over the years and a couple not so good albums. And we're going to get into those right now. Uh, so we'll start off with uh, number nine on the list. And that's their most recent album. This is uh, Kingdoms Disdained, I think, I'm, uh, if my memory's right. Here's a picture disc version I got a while back. This is a Record, Stay, Record Store Day exclusive. Yes, it is Kingdoms Disdained. Yeah, there it is on the front of this one. Um... So yeah, I've got a bit of a weird relationship with this album. When I um, when this first came out and I listened to it, I absolutely loved it. And uh, a couple of weeks ago when I decided to do, uh, do this video, I thought I'll listen back to everything just to make sure my ranking's in order. And I have to say, uh, when I revisited this, it was nowhere near as, near as good as I remembered it being. Um, yeah, very disappointing actually. Um, Steve Tucker was back after David Vincent was gone for the second time round. So I had high hopes for this, and um, it starts off really well. The first track, uh, Piles of Little Arms, is really, really good. But then after that, you don't get anything, for me, resembling like uh, a catchy hook or a, a great riff until you get to track uh, seven. Um, and then uh, things do start to pick up. That's the Pillars Crumbling is really good. For No Master I really enjoy, and From the Hand of Kings is good. But a lot of this is just completely forgettable. Obviously, all the musical performances are fantastic. You know, you're not playing this type of band if you can't play your instrument. But there's just nothing that really sticks out in the memory. Um, yeah, no memorable riffs or anything like that. No catchy choruses. It's uh, very disappointing. Um, yeah, it's such a shame. I was really, really looking forward to this one. But it just didn't live up to uh, my expectations, unfortunately. So that's number nine, uh, Kingdom's Disdained. This is the most recent one from 2017. That's number nine in my list. Next up an is an album that gets a lot of hate, and um, I don't think it's as bad as it's made out to be. Um, and I can't even pronounce the bloody title, so I'm not going to bother. Um, but it's the album they put out in 2011, The Return of David Vincent. Uh, a lot of people hate this one, and um, it's not as bad as it's made out to be. Uh, certainly not perfect, though, hence it's so low down in the list. Um, there's a lot of um, experimental tracks on this, and uh, a lot of people just do not like them at all and just completely disregard the album. Um, however, for me, some of the more experimental tracks I don't mind at all, and that's from the very first listen as well. I put this up on CD when it first came out. And from the off, I loved um, Too Extreme and I Am Morbid. Nothing wrong with those at all. I really, really enjoy those songs. And there's other songs on here that are just um, basically the good old death metal that they've been doing for years. Great stuff like Azisto Volgori, Blades for Bale, Nevermore, Ten More Dead. Um, but there's some other stuff on here that's just totally forgettable. Um, Beauty Meets Beast is pretty good, actually. Um, and Destructors versus The Earth Attack is okay. Um, for me, though, this sounds like an album that's made by a band with two main people in the band uh, going in completely different directions. David Vincent probably wanted to go in the more experimental side of things, uh, a bit of industrial stuff in there, whereas Trey, I think, just wanted to do um, the more straight up death metal. And to me, the album's a bit of a mess. Um, I've seen footage from the tour when they were touring this album and you don't see any kind of interactions between David Vincent and Trey so it does make me wonder if they were really were not getting on along at the time uh, so yeah it's not as bad as it's made out to be but it's, um, it's, I've definitely got my issues with it some really strong stuff on it and some just completely forgettable stuff um, David Vincent doing some odd things with some of the vocals on this as well and um the last thing I've got to say about this is that some of the song titles on this album are really pretentious. Uh, some real nonsense on this. Um, but yeah, not as bad as it's made out to be. But it's certainly not the home run that a lot of people were hoping that they were going to hit. 
Number seven is Heretic from 2003. Another album fronted by Steve Tucker. I'm going to get the bad out of the way straight away. Uh, about the last three or four songs in this are just a bunch of sort of instrumental songs, um, which are by no means terrible, but for me bring absolutely nothing to proceedings, and they kind of spoil the album for me, really. If you got rid of all those um, and just kept what comes before it, it would be a much, much better album for it. Production on this is not brilliant. Uh, the sound's a little bit muddy, but certainly not the worst production job in the world I've heard. But the good stuff on this is very, very good. Um, yeah, I think the Steve Tucker era doesn't get a lot of recognition, or doesn't get enough recognition, I should say, as it deserves. Um, there's some brilliant stuff on this. Um, this is the last album to feature uh, Pete Sandoval on the drums. Some great stuff on this. Cleansing Pestilence, first song. Brilliant stuff. Um, then one of my favourite Morbid Andrews songs, Enshrined by Grace, is up next. Uh, there's other good stuff on here. Where are we at? Yeah, Curse the Flesh Beneath the Hollow. Praise of Strength, Stricken Arise. Uh, within the Enemy, Gods of Our Own Divinity. There's lots of good stuff on this. But some of the stuff right towards the end is just uh, completely pointless. And doesn't need to be on there as far as I'm concerned. Um, some ferocious riffing on this. Obviously, Pete Sandoval's drumming's great. Steve Tucker, I do really like, but I do think his vocals are a little bit generic compared to, say, David Vincent's. But this is still a very, very good album. Um, again, doesn't get enough love as far as I'm concerned. But if you've been sleeping on this one, I'd highly recommend checking it out. But, uh, yeah, don't fuss yourself too much with the last few songs because they're quite pointless, really. Up next is their second album, Blessed Are The Sick. I mentioned this just recently in my uh, top 30 albums of 1991. For me, this album is, um, it just doesn't live up to the hype. Um, still a really good album, I do enjoy it, but um, when you hear so much praise about something, you're kind of expecting the second coming of Christ, and that just doesn't happen for me on this. But lots of good stuff on this, needs to take this out of the, uh, the sleeve, because it's hard to bloody read. But Fall From Grace is fantastic. Uh, Blessed Are The Six, really good. Thy Kingdom Come, I really enjoy Desolate Ways I really like, The Ancient Ones. Yeah, but for me, it's just not as good as it's made out to be. But still a very good album, no doubt about it. This was recorded by the original lineup. You still have Richard Brunel on this, who recently passed away. Uh, a good album, but for me, it's just not as good as it's made out to be. And there we are. Up next from 2000, Gateways to Annihilation. I got this on CD when it first came out, and I absolutely loved it, and I still love it now. Um, Steve Tucker's second album of the band. This has also got Eric Rutan on it, who rejoined them. He played on Domination, and he wasn't on Formula's Fail to the Flesh, but he's back for this one. Uh, great album. Um, there's a couple of slow ones on this that I really, really enjoy. And um, obviously there's some fast ones as well. It's a really, really good album. Again, doesn't get enough recognition, I think. Uh, but Side A is absolutely phenomenal. There's nothing bad on there. Uh, Summoning Redemption, Aegis Still I, I Am, He Who Sleeps, brilliant, brilliant song. Uh, one With Nothing is fantastic as well. And uh, on Side B, Opening the Gates, Awakening, God of Forsaken. Tons of good stuff on this. Um, yeah, I really, really enjoy it. It's a, it's a great album. Um, obviously, fantastic riffing. Great drums, of course there is. It's brilliant stuff. Uh, kind of flies under the radar a little bit for me. But I really enjoy this one. Uh, Gateway to Annihilation from 2000. Brilliant stuff. Uh, into the top four now. And for me, this next album is an underrated death metal behemoth. I got this when it first came out in 1998 on CD and it floored me. It's the debut album, uh, sorry, not the debut album, the first album I made with Steve Tucker on vocals. Formulas Fla Fatal to the Flesh. Phenomenal album. This is so good. Again, a lot of David Vincent fanboys uh, just completely disregard this stuff, but you shouldn't do that, you know. Uh, open your mind and check it out. It's absolutely amazing. Absolutely love it. Uh, Heave and Earth, Prayer of Hatred, and Billers Sag. I think that's how you say it. The first three tracks are just fantastic. 
Uh, nothing is not is really really good. Chambers of Dis, Covenant of Death, fantastic song. Him to a gas giant, and again, um, much the same with Heretic. The last few songs are just a load of kind of instrumental bits and pieces, which once again, um, you know, nothing wrong with them. But for me, I don't really bring anything to it at all. And again, this would be a better album without those uh, songs right towards the end. Yeah, just kind of pointless for me, basically. But the rest of it's absolutely fantastic. Brilliant, brilliant technical death metal. Amazing riffs, amazing drums. You know, I'm not repeat myself here, but it's true. These guys know how to write great riffs. The drumming is always absolutely fantastic. An absolutely phenomenal album. Very, very underrated, in my opinion. Uh, go check it out if you haven't. Fallman's Fatal to the Flesh, that's number four. Number three is their debut, Alters of Madness, from 1989. You know this album. Um, this has got some absolutely stone-cold, 110% classic death metal songs on it. Um, Immortal Rights' first song is just absolutely fantastic. Visions from the Dark Side, I love. Maze of Torment, one of the best death metal songs ever recorded. Great riffing in that. Chapel of Ghouls, an absolute classic. Bleed for the Devil I love as well. Damnation's very, very good. Blasphemy, Evil Spells. Uh, yeah, it's just an absolutely fantastic album. Really, really good stuff. I'd love to have been uh, listening to Death Metal when this first dropped because this must have just been like a massive punch to the face if all you'd heard up to this point was thrash. Um, and then you hear this. This is just uh, stepping it up to the next level. Amazing stuff. Again, great riffing. Great drumming, etc., uh, etc. Et it's just a phenomenal album. But for me, it's only number three. Um, there's a couple of that are even better than this. And let's get into that right now. Number two on my list is uh, Covenant from 1993. If my memory's right, this is the first death metal album that was ever released on a major label. I think in the States this was released on Giant Records. Uh... Earache here in the UK. Uh, great, really, really good stuff. Uh, yeah, Richard Bruno would have left, so it's just down to a three piece here. And then just uh, came along with an absolutely crushing bunch of songs. Um, a phenomenal album. The opening track, Rapture, is absolutely brilliant. Fantastic guitar riffing on that. Pain Divine is really, really good. Uh, World of Shit's great. Vengeance is mine. Lion's Den. Side A is just all brilliant, brilliant stuff. Uh, Blood on My Hands, first track on side two, one of my favourite songs on the whole album. Angel of Disease, really like that. Uh, David Vincent sort of uh, changes the vocal style a little bit on that one, and it really suits it, actually. Really enjoy that. Swan to the Black, another absolutely fantastic song. And it ends with God of Emptiness, which I think might be the first Morbid Angel song I ever heard. Um, the other thing I'd say about that is, um, when I first saw the video of this, I think it was on Beavis and Butted back in the day, it played the version where at the end it doesn't have the part where um, David Vincent saying bow to me faithfully, etc, etc. Which I think is a little bit of a a weak part of that song. I actually prefer before that stuff comes in. If it stopped there, there it would have been more perfect for me. I do still like the, uh, the latter part, but um, it's not as good as the rest of the song as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, brilliant, brilliant stuff. I've had this on a CD since about 95, I reckon. Absolutely uh, fantastic album. Brilliant stuff. Not a bad song on it. But one album slightly better. And let's get into it now. For me, the best Morbid Angel album is Domination. Uh, brilliant, brilliant stuff. I just said that uh, God of Emptiness might have been the first Morbid Angel song I ever heard. Or it might be Dominate from this. It's the first track on this. I remember getting it on a... Uh, CD free with Terrorizer magazine back in 1995. Um, that was a good time for death metal albums coming out because I remember also on that CD you had um, a track from Death Symbolic and from Out the Gates is a Ser not Serpent of the Sun Slaughter of the Soul album on that very same CD. Yeah, for me the best uh, Morbid Angel album. This is when they were first joined by Eric Rutan on second guitar. There's not a bad song on it. It's absolutely phenomenal. 
the opening track dominate is just a brutal brutal slice of death metal and then up next is where the slime live and um one of my favorite morbid angel songs if not my favorite morbid angel song um i think that was the first time they uh, tuned down to like b using seven string guitars hearing that really slow riff with the double kick drums pounding away behind it i think it was the first time i'd ever really heard anything like that and it still just absolutely floors me now. Uh, an absolutely fantastic song. Those first two songs are absolutely brilliant. Then you've got Eyes to See, Ears to Hear, which is another great song. Uh, Nothing But Fear is brilliant. Dawn of the Angry, great riffing on that. Absolutely amazing. Some of my favourite more danger riffing on that song. Uh, this Means War, Dreaming, Inquisition, Birmingham, Hate Work, and the last track. Perfect death metal album. And for my money, uh, Morbid Angel's best. Absolutely outstanding stuff. Um, back in the 90s, these guys were untouchable. Everything they put out was really, really good. But for me, this is the best. Uh, a phenomenal album. Absolutely essential death metal. I was going to say, if you haven't heard this, pick this up. But to be honest, pick any of the first four up because they're all absolutely phenomenal albums. Brilliant, brilliant death metal from an absolute legendary band. Uh, yeah, when David Vincent... Trey, Pete Sandoval were on form. They were really on form and just knocking out killer albums left, right and centre. Adding Eric Rutan to the mix was never going to be a bad thing and this album is absolutely phenomenal. Phenomenal. Yep, yeah, Morbid Angel's Domination from 1995. My number one Morbid Angel album. Absolutely fantastic stuff. Uh, technically brilliant. Catchy but brutal songs. Absolutely phenomenal. Go out and uh, check out if you're not familiar with it. An absolutely flawless masterpiece. Brilliant, brilliant stuff. Right, guys, that is it for this week. Uh, before I sign off, I just want to say a, a quick rest in peace to Mike Howe from Metal Church. Uh, that was quite a shock when I heard that this morning. Uh, I saw them at um, Bloodstock just a couple of years ago, and he was on top form, and it's such a, so strange to think that he's uh, no longer with us. Um, stuff like The Human Factor... Uh, I absolutely love that album. Brilliant, brilliant stuff. Um, love his vocals on that. Such a shame. You know, uh, rest in peace, Mike. You will be missed and you'll live on through your music. Right, guys, that is it for this week. Um, as always, if you like this video, please do hit the like button. If you're not subscribed to the channel, then please do subscribe. It's very much appreciated. And I'll uh, catch up with you next time. Look after yourselves and I'll see you later. Goodbye.